Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. Nigeria has had its fair share of notable armed robbers like the dreaded Ishola Oyinusi and Shino Rambo, who terrorized the entire Southwest, Lawrence Anini aka The Law, who dealt with the entire South South. In this video, we are going to be looking at a different notorious armed robber. Sit back as I bring you the story of Okudele Ndiwe aka Deriko Nwamama, who held the entire Southeast to a standstill. Deriko started out as a strict auction in Onicha before he then graduated to a pickpocket and then to a dreaded criminal whose mere mention of his name sent shivers down the spine of every single human being in the entire southeastern part of Nigeria in the late 1990s and early 2000s. If you are new to my channel, you are highly welcome. Please do take this time to subscribe to my channel and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so you can always stay notified and updated whenever I post a new video. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Today, I bring you the interesting story of the tragic rise and fall of Deriko Nwamama, who reigned between the year 1999 to 2001 during the tenure of Governor Chinwoke Mbadunuju. He started off by robbing market women and banks. He was reported to have killed 25 policemen and at least 100 civilians during his reign as a criminal. Indeed, long before Deriko became famous for his exploits in the city of Onisha, the entire Anambra state was under the control of another ruthless and cold-blooded armed robber known as Chejina who would later become Deriko's partner in crime. I'll be talking a little about how he was killed by Deriko later in this video. Let us go back to Deriko's story. Deriko was only 22 years old at the time he was raining terror on the people of Anambra State. He was known by the name Deriko Wamama or simply Deriko. He rose through the ranks quickly to become the leader of a ruthless armed robbery gang that was synonymous with blood and terror in the eyes of the people. There were instances where some people lost their livelihood and others their lives as a result of his terror. It was no different at night. Many would say they could only sleep with one eye open because the Rico would come when he would at night or during the day. During his reign, Deriko would rob the biggest and most secure banks in Onicha, cutting away millions of naira and leaving dead bodies littered all over the bank. He and his gang would lay ambush waiting for luxurious interstate buses to rob. In December 2000, it is said that Deriko attacked a 59-seater bus at the popular Upper Iweka. After robbing the passengers, they decided to kill all the passengers, of which only four of them survived. After every operation, he would often boast of his invisibility that no man could kill him. At the height of his reign, it was estimated that Deriko killed over 100 people, including police officers. Deriko Wamama had a very interesting modus operandi. Although he terrorized the entire state of Anambra, striking in various places, particularly on Ichan, he was not residing in the state. As a matter of fact, his base was Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory. Deriko only visited his hometown when it was time to launch maximum terror. At a period, Deriko used the town of Umuleri as his hideout. Then from there, he would issue threatening messages to the police that they will pay for killing members of his gang. He also maintained his bases in other towns like Agbo. Now, let's talk about how Deriko killed Chejina. Chejina was from Aguleri, Anambra State, and before Deriko came onto the scene, Chejina was described by the police as the dreadest armed robber in all of Anambra State. The center of his leather operation was on nature. Deriko's father, too, was from Aguleri, and in no time, the paths of the two crossed, and they became very good friends and colleagues in the armed robbery business. However, their friendship would not last for long as bloody arguments soon broke out between the two of them over the scope and nature of executing their operations. 
Chenjina did not really like the way Dariko killed people during operations. Both of them were at the peak of their strengths and they were equally feared all over the region. But the brutality of Dariko would soon prove too toxic for Chejina. During a violent agreement over their mode of operation, Dariko blasted Chejina to an early grave with a volley of bullets. After the death of Chejina, Dariko became the undisputed emperor of terror in the land. Anambra was in soup and the environs would not be spared too. Around May 2001, the Anambra State Police Command launched Operation Derico, which was aimed at capturing Derico and his gang members. There had been Operation Thunderbolt, Operation Abortion, Operation Cobra, and Operation Mimicry to capture other armed robbers, especially those based in the Umule Regulary axis of the state. The police had recorded varying degrees of successes with these operations, but they were never able to lay their hands on the dreaded Derico. It seemed like they were on a wide goose chase. Governors of the predominantly Igbo southeastern states were fed up with the spiraling level of violence from armed robbery to kidnapping and ritual murders. They decided to launch their own paramilitary outfits that would provide adequate security to the people. These vigilante outfits were to work with the police or in collaboration with the police force. This was how the Bakasi Boys Vigilante Group was formed. Enjoying immense support from the local populace, the Bakati boys were at the forefront of the hunt and capture of Deriko Mwamama. The violent and unbroken streak of Deriko would come to a sudden but dramatic end on a Tuesday, the 3rd of July, 2001. He was captured by the much dreaded Bakasi boys, the, the, the militant wing of the Anambra Vigilante Services AVS in Onicha, which happened to be his hometown. He was on the way to Onicha from Agbo in Delta State. Following the news of his capture, Onicha erupted in joy and cheers as the Bakasi boys cruised and squeezed round the city at neck breaking speeds in their buses, brandishing cutlasses, charms, and all kinds of weapons. They were hailed as heroes and were treated to rapturous applauses wherever they went. Okada riders, market women, traders, and school children trooped out onto the streets in their hundreds to celebrate the much anticipated capture of the man who turned their nights into nightmares and their dreams into hopelessness. The police and Bakasi boys had been combing everywhere for Dariko for more than a year before he fell into the trap specifically laid for him. Dariko had killed over 100 people, including 15 officers of the Nigerian police whose lives he mercilessly wasted. He was a master of countless boss robbery, robberies and will not blink twice before pumping his hot lead bullets into the beaten hearts of his helpless victims. Before the coming of Bakasi boys, Derico sacked commercial banks in Onisha, cutting away millions of Naira and customer savings. What happened to those that he wrecked financially can only be imagined. And after his successful raids, he would boast and declare himself invisible. Derico seemed to have placed a lot of faith and confidence in the charms prepared for him by the traditional witch doctors. According to reports, some of the charms were made inside some of the most well-known rivers in the state. He believed in the power of the amulets, but eventually the nakedness of his foolishness was laid bare. In one of his last operations in June 2001, his daredevil gang descended upon the Achala police station in Oka North local government area with all the fury left in hell. Nigerian policemen scampered off for their dear lives while Derico and his team conducted a surgical operation on the police station. By the time they were done, they went with seven police assault rifles. That particular operation was so dangerous that Derico did not go all alone with his gang. He called for collaboration with another gang from Umuleri. They were planning to rob a bank in Asaba the Delta State capital and they needed heavy weapons to carry out their haste. The operations launched by the Nigerian police were vast but the net did not catch the big fish. In one of the operations, six operatives of the Special Anti-Robbery Squad SAS and Bakasi boys left Oka, the Anambra State capital and headed for Nigeria's capital city Abuja where Derico was based. They almost caught Derico but he escaped. Two of his deadliest lieutenants were however arrested. Derico fled, abandoning his amazing catch of weapons, amulets, and charms. With the heat on him, Derico scampered off and was on the way to his hometown in Onisha. 
On getting to Agbo where he maintained an armed robbery base, he alighted from the bus for a short stopover. The Bakasi boys got the wind of Derico's movement and decided to ambush him. They mobilized at the end of the Ninja Bridge which linked Asaba and Onicha and stayed round the clock hoping to catch the very elusive Derico. The beginning of the end of Derico was on a Tuesday night, the 3rd of July 2001. Derico ran out of luck that very night at the bridgehead in Onicha. He was on a commuter bus coming from Asaba in Delta State, heading towards Onicha when the vehicle ran into a checkpoint mounted by the Bakasi boys. He was identified and arrested by the Bakasi boys who stated that Derico was found with an unspecified identity card that was reported to have been signed by, the highly, by a highly placed indigenous of the state. However, the name of the influential figure was not mentioned. Now, captured criminals were savagely beaten, mutilated, dismembered and even set on fire, all without trial by the Bakasi boys at the time. The end of Derico would prove to be even more dramatic. On the 9th of July, 2001, six days after Derico was captured, Bakasi boys chanting war songs drove in their clangorous buses to the ever bustling Ochanja Market Junction along Iweka Road in Onisha, one of the commercial nerve centers of the state. And right there in the middle of the market, their buses came to a striking stop. Crazy shouts of excitement and unspeakable terror filled the atmosphere of one of West Africa's most active markets. So, Some of the Bakasi boys did not even let their buses come to the typical maddening stop before they jumped out of the vehicles. Some from the windows, the doors were barely closed as they sped rec recklessly towards the center of Onicha. Traders, Traders and shop owners at the market hurriedly closed their shops to have a full view of the drama that was about to unfold. Derico was dragged out, his face was thoroughly panic beaten a sure mark of the non-stop physical assault and the maximum manhandling that he had received in the hands of the Bakasi boys in the dungeon where he had been locked up. Derico was in obvious pain but no one seemed to care he was going to taste the same chili pepper and atarodo that he had rubbed in the eyes of his helpless victims. Still chanting work songs and edged on by the ecstatic mob, the Bakasi boys were totally in control and in minutes a huge crowd had formed around the arena waiting for the most anticipated spectacle. At that moment, one of the war commanders of Bakasi boys named Opompi addressed the crowd, which was now swelling by the minute. With a voice that pierced through the electrified crowd, Opompi said, that the Bakasi boys were not in the state for politics. He said they had no business with politics and they were strictly interested in fighting crime. He went further to add that whoever was thinking they were involved in politics was a joker. Although chaotic, the end of Derrico still had some semblance of a ceremony even if it was a most gory one indeed. Responding to approving rars from the Avengers second crowd, the Bakasi boys assured the people that insecurity would become a thing of the past in the state. At that point, the microphone was handed over to Derrico. Trembling like a flayed cat on a dark, lonely winter night, he begged for his life and like all legendary criminals staring death in the face, he made some feeble last attempts to declare his innocence and plead for mercy that would never materialize. Full of regrets, screaming in pain and covered with sweat, tears and blood, Derico said, My name is Odi alias Derico, alias Wamama. I appeal to you, the people of Anambra State, please don't kill me. I don't like evil. It was when I killed Chejina that people thought I am a strong guy, you know. The crowd let out a confused mix of shouts and gibberish. The spirit of vengeance had possessed everyone in the city center, but Derico continued begging and pleading for his life. And at a point, he even denied robbing anyone. He stated, I quote, I trust Bakasi boys. They are strong. Please, mercy for me. Nobody can identify me as having robbed him. People just believe that I am a strong man. Still written in pain like a wounded Indian cobra, Derico let out some strict secrets. He said that while he was on the run, he was shattered by a member of the National Assembly in Abuja. Derrico did not stop there. He also confessed that he also had two other powerful protectors. One was a member of the Anambra State House of Assembly, while the other was the chairman of a local government council. 
What was to follow remains one of the most gruesome displays of public executions in Nigeria. With the speed of light in a flash, Derico was beheaded. His severed head rolled on the floor before the crowd while his convulsing body collapsed on the ground with bright red blood gushing from his arteries. It was like a sacrifice to the gods had just taken place. Following the death of Derrico, some of his gang members fled the city and regrouped in Lagos, leading the police to issue a public notice. Another thing worthy of remembrance is that when Derrico was caught by the Bakasi boys, his other gang members actually launched a violence attack on the base of the Bakasi boys where he was locked up in an attempt to rescue Derrico, but it was all a futile exercise. Derrico's boys had mobilized themselves from Abuja and Lagos and marched towards where their leader was chained and they approached the area where the Bakasi boys were. They opened fire on the Bakasi boys but the Bakasi boys returned fire leading Derrico's men to disappear into the nearby army barracks. Luckily for them, the Anambra vigilante service men did not operate in military barracks at the time and could not give them a hot pursuit. Even a week after the killing of Derrico, the Nigerian police were still saying that they were not aware of the killing, insisting that Derrico was still alive. Derrico was napped alongside another dreaded armed robber named Wang Cho. Popular urban legend then has it that Derrico and Chejina were bathed in a special charm called Odeshi, which rendered them invisible to bullets. I'm sure you must have enjoyed this video. If you did, please do not forget to share this video with your family and friends. Do not forget to click the like button and then also do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Do have a wonderful day.